Uh, Mr. Laga, good morning to you. It's certainly a very sad time that uh, we are speaking. Talk to us about Peter Gallo's contribution to the music industry, not just in South Africa, but the continent. Uh, thank, thanks, Ayat uh, Koli, and uh, good morning to the, to, to the listeners, to the viewers. It's a very sad period of, 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 uh, of, uh, of the year in the, in, the, in the whole industry, by the way. Um, Peter Gallo was... His family would know that uh, were instrumental in having the, were, were the first actually to have a, a record company or recording studios mm. on the continent. And uh, Gallo, up to today, still owns the biggest, largest, uh, what is it, uh, 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 library of, of music. And uh, I was very fortunate that I uh, uh, yeah, met him in 1972 as a youngster when I made my first recording and I was introduced to him by uh, the late great Weston Gorsi. And at the same time, and uh, West was actually recording uh, Lady Smith Black Mambas. And uh, one thing that I liked about Peter was that he, he, he was one of those CEOs at the time and the owner of the biggest company on the continent that, uh, you know, had an open door policy. I mean, as a youngster, I would just walk in at his office and uh, he would, uh, you know, let, let me in and listen to what this youngster was talking about at the time. And you would know he pioneered the first uh, uh, um, uh, collaboration between Africa and the U.S. In, in, um, uh, by sending the first artist, South African artist overseas, to make a record there, which was uh, Alec Haudu, who I happened to have met at the time when they returned from the U.S. Um, uh, there with his group, uh, 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 Umoja, which I joined and uh, worked with. And, uh, you know, he, his, his history and legacy, it's, you know, I, I cannot really say it in words that so many of us who have benefited mm -hmm. out of his generosity. Um, Steve Miller, um, you know, you name many groups, as you said, that Harari at the time, uh, which was South, South Africa's biggest group, and uh, they were under uh, um, um, the, the, the mentorship of the men like, like, like Peter, and who gave uh, the artists uh, as I say, and he respected, by the way, the artist, the musician, because he knew um, it is with the artist that he could grow uh, his legacy. And uh, um, we are here today, you know, uh, defending, not even defending, you say, uh, uh, keeping up his legacy. As I say, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have worked and uh, have met the man and who has inspired me and encouraged me. Today I own my own record label because it was because of Peter, Peter, uh, Peter Gallo who has always was an encouragement in, in uh, uh, becoming, uh, me becoming who I am today. Mm. Talk, talk to us about whether or not, I mean, it's interesting that I pick up, uh, as you were saying that, and, and you're correcting yourself, that you hear here defending uh, his legacy, so to speak. Would there be artists, um, Don Laka, who may just come up and accused uh, for example, Gallo Music Records of not looking after artists because we know that many of our artists, especially here in South Africa, they die poor. Absolutely. Um, that's the legacy of the record industry, unfortunately, and it, it cannot be in the making of Peter Gallo uh, because the whole world industry it has been like that. But I don't know, uh, uh, you know, as I say, um, I, I, I can speak from a different perspective. There, there are artists who obviously come in and say, oh, but Gallo has written you off. But, you know, it, it depends what, when one speaks in those terms, what is he referring to? Is he referring to that he was denied access into contracts? Was he denied access into uh, really understanding what he was uh, under, uh, doing at the yeah. time? Yeah. I was not one of those. I, I was fortunate that at the time, actually, I was even allowed to have my own publishing when it was not popular. Uh, in the 80s, I was actually one of the first a few uh, Africans to, you know, in, in, in the country to own a, a record, what is it, a publishing. And uh, it, it was inspired by him. Mm. So, you know, as I say, I will speak from a different perspective as opposed to those who might have not have the access or the knowledge as I had of, the, of, of how to be in the music industry. All right. Uh, we'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you very much for affording us your time.